It's Dian Boyce in front in the closing straight for South Africa. And the rest trailing in his way. Who won't get there? Boyce is going to be the champion. It'll be a very good time. 49-46, a new Paralympic record. Dian Boyce has taken it. Breaking a world record that had stood for 16 years, crossing the line in that astonishing time of 49-46. Dian Pace, winner of two medals at the Paralympics in Rio. One gold, one bronze. He joins us here in the studio. Minister Dian Pace, how are you? I'm very good. Why am I calling you Minister? Uh, because I'm ordained pastor of the AFM. Uh, so I was ordained in 2013 as uh, a pastor. So you're a man from Kerk? Yes. How important is that in your athletics career that you are such a religious man? You even studied theology. Yes, I did. You went to university to study theology. Yes. What is that actually? What, what, is, what is theology in a word? Well, theology is, is basically the, it's a, the word relates to it's the study of God. So basically what we look at, we look at the history of the Bible and the interpretation of scripture and so forth. Hmm. Yes. Now, you've got your two medals around your neck. And last week... We had Ntando Masangu here. He had a silver medal. And I said to the viewers, listen to the medal, shake it, because the medals make different noises yes. for those uh, um, athletes who can't see. Yes. So now we have the opportunity to actually do the experiment because they're louder, right? So take us through that. Let's start yes. with the bronze medal. If you can shake the bronze medal, it's nice and soft, yes. I hear it. Then let's hear the gold medal. It is much louder. Yes, it is. And that's how they are able to, de to define that, okay, this is a gold one, this is a bronze one, this is a silver one. Yes. That is absolutely, whoever thought of that is astonishing. But let's talk about you now, because I'd read a lot about you, Dian. Lots of people talking about the last four years, building up to this. You've been one who say it was a very hard time of your life. And I kept wondering, what is it that was so hard in the last four years of your life, building up to these Paralympics? Well, um, after the 2012 Paralympics, there was a lot of transition taking place in my life. And I think I had to adapt to that transition because um, when I went to 2012, I was only 21 years old. Mm. And um, in 2013, I got married. And in 2014, my daughter was born. Uh. And in between, in that years, I also studied further. So I did my geography up until second year level. And I also studied um, teaching last year. Mm. So in between teaching and also ministering at the church, it was a lot of balls that I had to juggle. So in between, it was, it was very difficult. And there was also um, financial challenges that came in that was, that was very tough. So wife, money, studies, fees must fall. All of these <laughs> things were happening in your life for real. And you were still having to try and prepare for yes. the Paralympics. Yes. I know a lot of viewers are probably watching right now and saying, we just saw the guy run, we saw him break a world record, but what's wrong with you? Why are you at the Paralympics? What is it that is your disability? Well, my disability is called cerebral palsy. So it's basically my left side is affected. So my left uh, arm and leg is affected, uh. but it's basically a brain injury that happened at birth uh, that caused this effect. So as a baby, you had a stroke? Yes. And then that caused, so everybody understands what a person who has a stroke yes. looks like and before, after they have the real, it happened to my dad even. Yeah. So that's what happened to you as a baby? Yes, during the birth process. And it affects your left side? Yes. Okay. So how did you then decide that I'm going to go and run? Well, um, I was also always passionate about sport. In school, I was in a normal school, so I had to participate against able um, athletes. So that is where I realized I have talent for long jump and running as well. Mm. In, in 2008, um, I set myself a goal. I said, 2012, I'm going to London. But how do you get there? Because you have cerebral palsy. Is it a case of just great physios and great occupational therapists that were able to move you from a place where obviously your left side was very badly affected to the point where you are now able to sprint, run, jump, do everything that um, you now do? Well, I, I contributed to a, a very active lifestyle as a, as a youngster. Because um, f where I'm from, from Riversdale, the small town, uh, we, used to, yes, we used to play cricket in the streets, touch rugby in the streets, soccer in the streets. So from a young age, I was exposed to being active. And I think that helped in my development as a, as a sports person in mm. my sport um, activities and so forth. You've got five medals already in the cabinet. What more does Dian Bays have to do? 
Well, I'm very excited for the 400, so I think um, I'm, I'm, I'm going for the world, world record. record holder. So that is something I would, I would want to do. Um, so I'm going for the, I broke the Paralympic record, which is, um, which is my Paralympic record now, but I want to go for the world record, which is 49.33. So, so, so that's that was goal. the Paralympic record. That was the Paralympic record. And there's a world record that still needs to be yes, broken. Yes, yes. So you're aiming for that? Yes. Now, but how, the wife, the studies, the kids, all of the, that are coming, those things, and then the running, how are you going to balance all of this? Well, um, at the moment, I'm doing my honours um, degree in, in education, um, and I've uh, received uh, uh, occupation as well as a teacher. So I'm, I'm teaching now for, for the last um, quarter at the school last term and then uh, next day I'm completing my honours and I'm thinking about maybe going on for my masters in education and con continuing with my sport as well. But money is also another thing anymore. The Paralympics is uh, uh, not only the medals full in the cabinet but Saskok also gives big bonuses so I know there was a time you were really almost hurt about the fact that financially you were struggling. Yes. Um, the thing that, 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 that one must realize about the, about the bonuses and so forth, it is if you stretch it over four years, it's actually not a lot. Um, and I think people often make the mistake um, by thinking that uh, in Paralympic sport, there's, there's uh, major money involved. Because right now, I think you just came home with nearly 500,000. Yes. That's what happens in my mind. You're saying, think about it another way. Yes. Because if you think about it, there's also other expenses. If you look at expen uh, sports specific expenses and so forth, um, if you look at it, then that 500,000 is actually not a lot mm. um, because there's also other expenses that you have to look at and you cannot live off that bonuses because, and that is the reason why I'm looking also for alternative income. That's why I went um, to, to I teach. heard you after the, after the race, you said straight, give me a job. <laughs> like, I, I was even like amazed. I was like, listen to this guy. He's like, I need a job. Is that the case, though? <laughs> yes, it is. Um, the thing is, I think that that was the challenge after 2012. I received the bonuses, and then there wasn't any um, foundation uh, or any stable income. Mm. So I had to live off the bonuses. So you're eating the money, and so if nothing's coming in, it just goes out. Yes, that's, that's, that's exactly the point. So that's why I'm saying um, I need a job. So I c can have at least a stable income to support my family and cover all the other expenses. You're a top athlete. You're chasing the world record. What's the ideal job? The ideal job for me is I would like to work for, for a congregation and, 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 and love out my ministry. But teaching is also a part of me. So I like teaching because I feel it comes naturally to me. But, but my ideal job would be to work for a church. To work for a church? Yes. But most people work in the church, aren't they the ones giving money? They don't really get money out when you work in a church, um, you know? Yeah, but the thing you is... You earn a salary working in a church? Yeah, you can um, earn a salary working for a church. Um, but, but that is my ministry and I feel that is what I'm called to do. So I'm, I believe I'm called to run for now, but I'm called to be a, a pastor and to make a difference in, in that regard. Dian, it's unbelievable. Sorry, Minister Dian Vase. I'm sorry, I've just got to get it right, get it in the system, uh, that the man is an ordained minister. It's fantastic what you've been able to achieve, five medals at the Paralympics, and you still want to, are you going to be at the next one? Yes. You're still planning to be there? Yes. It's awesome to have him in the studio, Dian Bass, having made us proud at the Paralympics in Rio, but he needs a job, guys. <laughs> That's the plea that we heard here. If there's a church out there that's looking for a really, really fast guy. I mean, he can, he can motor down the church. He can get it done. <laughs> Through the church, uh, whatever you need, he's zoom, 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 zoom. Dion Bates is the guy for that job. <laughs>